Hello, I'm Farhana Sultana, an associate professor in the Department of Geography and the Environment at Syracuse University. In thinking about reckoning with research methods and ethics, um, I want to make some brief comments on power dynamics in the research process and some issues that have come up in terms of ethical collaboration and research. My hope is that this will be generative for conversations and reflection. When considering research methods and ethics, an issue that comes up for me and many scholars is considerations of how social scientists go about doing our research, um, how we design our research, the data collection, who participates, whose voice gets to count, the dissemination of the research, but then also the impact uh, of that research and then its uptake within the communities in which we work. So for instance, as greater interest and awareness have arisen on issues uh, that carry a lot of weight in numerous ways, such as climate change or environmental governance or social justice, we're seeing more interconnections across different disciplinary and subdisciplinary fields, but also more and more social scientists are working transdisciplinarily and across the globe. This raises a host of issues naturally. Because there are power relations and hierarchies that are involved in this global research process, but these are not always discussed or taken into consideration sufficiently ahead of time. Or when we're thinking about what ethical considerations there might be in planning or designing the research and then carrying it out, a host of issues can arise that can confound the process. So ethical collaborations are increasingly necessary given global forms of injustices and connections around the world and the subsequent rising interest among social scientists to do research in uh, collaboratory or transdisciplinary ways around the world. So when we think about ethical collaborations, one example I can give is something we've been involved in and in the SSRC Trans-Regional Collaboratory on the Indian Ocean. This is a project that has had multi-year funding and involved scholars, students, researchers, and practitioners from around the world. I served on the International Screening Committee for two consecutive years and worked with grantees to discuss international fieldwork concerns and collaborative research design, especially in light of the ongoing pandemic-related disruptions and what it means to carry out ethical research. This has involved wide-ranging critical reflections and reformulations of plans, but then also reckoning with the methods that are used in understanding of ethics. So some considerations on research ethics and praxis have come to light that are important, especially for somebody like me who does qualitative and mixed methods ethnographic work that also has a lot of policy reach. So for instance, a lot of our students are first taught to think about research ethics in the concerns around IRB or the Institutional Review Board. These institutional constraints discuss um, issues around the student's research being ethical, about anonymizing, about time allocation, but then about institutional responsibilities. One thing that we don't always address is issues around funding cycles, teaching or TA responsibilities, and other personal professional um, opportunities and constraints that can influence a research process as it runs its course. So one of the things that we have come up with is thinking about what does it mean to do research in communities when there are clear differentials in power and privilege, whether that is within the institution, the, the university, or within and between uh, students and faculty, but then also how students and faculty go about doing better research in more accountable and ethical ways when we're out in the so-called field. Because there are problematic power dynamics between researchers and research communities that they study, we need to be really mindful of not perpetuating exploitation or extractive research practices that can cause harm over time. These issues about extraction or researchers theft, as well as insider outsider boundaries and power relations can become blurry during fieldwork. But these are issues that do come up in courses on methodology across the social sciences, but not in the same way. 
One issue that we also always don't talk about with our students is what happens when ethical collaborations just fail or fall apart because of a host of reasons. But there could be constraints on budgetary cycles, but then also in refusal from research participants to participate in what they might find to be extractive or inequitable. So when we talk about methodological and technical concerns to in order to design research better, I think one of the issues that we need to con consider, um, continually consider is how do we foster or encourage more ethical collaborations across disciplines and transdisciplinarily and, and across the gl globe. So now that I've kind of talked just a little bit about the background and context of some of my concerns and recent work, I want to end on three key issues that I believe deserve uh, continued attention vis-a-vis -vis pedagogy funding and reflections from scholars, institutions, um, students, but then also funding agencies. Because these methodological concerns are important when we think about ethical collaborations that go global and then the power relations that exist. So the first thing is ethics. So what do we mean by ethics and what do we teach our students when we talk about ethics? Because largely this is a thought about in terms of reducing exploitation, vulnerability or exposure, but then also practicing empathy and care for research participants and the research process itself. These can involve various forms of theoretical concerns and ethical pluralisms that I won't go into, but I think one issue that keeps coming up in various research projects and programs are issues around accountability and trust, but then also transparency and responsibility. Because we know that researchers need to have certain cultural and social familiarity and sensitivity, but then also competency in terms of where they do their research and how they go about doing it. So when we're talking about things like accountability, trust, transparency, confidentiality, or responsibility, ethics always come up. So in order to reduce exploitative research and then to pursue or foster the hope of any transformative collaboration is dependent on having robust institutional training and support and funding, but then also ongoing learning opportunities, which is where things can fall apart. Do we retrain our scholars and students? Do we help train research participants and what we mean or what they mean? Are we fostering a sense of care and compassion in terms of thinking not just only about research participants, but then also the ecologies and the non-human others amongst which we do our research, because research does not take place in a vacuum. It takes place in embodied cells, in ecologies, and places that have materiality. So we need to therefore also think about these issues and the connections, and then the deep listening and that empathy that is often not necessarily taught when everything is focused much more on IRB clearance, because that is on informed consent and that is important. But in order to do um, a collaborative research that co-produces knowledge from ethical standpoints, we need to think about beyond informed consent in terms of co-producing or collaborating on research design, on thinking about the ethical considerations throughout the research process to the self, to others, um, to multi-species justice, and so on. And these forms of acceptance of contestations along the way may be difficult or uncomfortable, but these discussions are necessary. And we need to have our students and our scholars and researchers be better prepared on this. A second issue is praxis. Now praxis means research that is informed by theory and ethics, but it is a re recursive research process that learns from practice and is open to modification, to surprise, to basically issues around critical reflexivity, around positionality and power webs, and also in webs of relationships and kinship. But it is at the same time about thinking about how do we reflect on theory making and how does methodology fit into this? Because um, as I said, research is not neutral and these power relations and relational privileges 
of doing research have to be able to inform not only what we do on the ground in terms of practice, but how we do theory making and academic knowledge production. And often what we see is that research, researchers, though not always, have enormous power or a hierarchical privilege in terms of communities across the global south or let's say racialized and minoritized communities or class-based privileges and or geopolitical privileges. These financial, geopolitical, class-based, educational, race-based privileges can also be wrapped up in what dictates how research goes. So if folks are not mindful of what this means, it can skew the data collection, but then also the relationships that are developed or which may not develop at all. So when we, we need to think about praxis when we want to talk about meaningful and impactful research for our students and for ourselves and for our institutions. And then the third and last point is about collaboration. Now collaborations take time to develop and often time is a limiting factor because people have a, a budgetary cycle limitations in time or in terms of students needing to finish their degrees. So we need to think about how we can foster collaborations that allow not only for ethical re, um, relationship and research, but then also that really um, allow for those collaborations that take um, time and its limitations into context, but then allows for more generative and capacious research to be done in the time at hand. So one of the things that we uh, discussed a lot over the last few years is what does it mean to do meaningful collaboration? Who decides the importance of this dialogic praxis? or deconstructing what collaboration means? How do we recognize the inco incoherence and the contingency of these relationships? Or how do we negotiate activist and academic divides or who has authority and voice and so on? So one of the things that keep coming up again is that outcomes often drive the research process. So whether that is an outcome in terms of a, a thesis, a, a dissertation, a research publication, or reporting back to the uh, uh, funders of the research. But we need to also recognize that built into this process of outcome are various disagreements and conflicts and uncertainties that arise and need to be resolved or may not be resolved. So when we have more collective decision-making on co-producing knowledge that does take time and does occur in certain places and across spatial and scalar relationships, we can also think about out puts and outcomes, then also impacts. Because we need to think beyond the institution and beyond the degree and beyond just the research process, because what ethical collaborative research does is it plants the seeds for further relationships. And, and in terms of thinking about not having deleterious impacts on the various lives and livelihoods in context. Because when people participate in our research, we should not only be compensating them for their time and their expertise financially or in kind, but then recognizing that we're also borrowing from their wisdom to bolster various academic theorizations and knowledge bases. So we need to have these sustained seats at the table and define or redefine the terms of the debate in terms of research design and the epistemological bases of the various researches we undertake. So obviously there are specialities across the social sciences that will approach this differently. There are issues of logistics and safety, uh, travel concerns, local political situations, all of these practicalities come into play. But I'm thinking more in terms of reckoning with com what comes before that, through the process and thereafter, because these are integral parts of how we do research and how we can do research institutionally better and then beyond academia, so that it isn't just only about academic knowledge production, but something much more generative and therefore possible going forward. So in conclusion, I just want to wrap up my brief talk with the hope that social scientists continue to move forward paying greater attention to ethical collaborations and transformative justice-oriented research that can hold the possibility of more meaningful outcomes and impacts. Because our research does inform policy and that policy impacts lives 
around the world. So we need to have more contextually powerful and more ethical research as we go forth in our pedagogy, in our training courses, in our funding cycles, but also in terms of how we go about doing our own research as researchers and scholars. So thank you for listening to my talk and I hope for everyone's fruitful and ethical collaborations going forward.